Hey guys, this is Claudio Giuliano here. And today I'm excited to be coming at you with this new review. And today we are reviewing the new Microsoft Surface Slim Pen. So this is Microsoft's latest pen design that comes with the Surface Pro X, but it's also compatible with other generations of the Surface Pro. So this is compatible with the Pro 5, with the Pro 6, and the Pro 7. I wanted to review it for you guys, and I also wanted to check it out for myself and see how it felt, see how this design impacts the overall drawing experience with the Surface. So I'm gonna be testing it with the Surface Pro 6 today. We're gonna to draw, we're gonna sketch, we're gonna paint, and we're gonna see if this $150 pen is worth buying because it's the same exact input technology as all previous generations, just pretty much in a new casing. However, what I found in testing this Slim Pen is the new design does make a bit of impact for drawing and sketching and painting. And later in the review, um, I'm going to point some of those things out. I'm going to point out some of the reasons I do actually like the new Slim Pen. So we're starting with the hardware, and it is comfortable in hand. It's ergonomic in hand, and it's very lightweight. It's a high-end build. It has a really nice, sleek look to it. Um, we have our top button, which is also the eraser. Uh, we have our bottom button here, which is also a lot easier to access versus the round pen. So I find the button placement on the slim pen to be a lot more ergonomic. Now the eraser is pretty much exactly the same as far as feel on screen goes and function. It just looks a bit different here. And overall, we have a really nice sleek design and I am finding it to be ergonomic when I work with it. So the new Surface Slim Pen doesn't have batteries. This is a rechargeable pen. So unlike the Pro X where it charges in the keyboard cover, Microsoft includes this dock with the pen so you can charge it. This is USB-C to USB-A and the pen also magnetically attaches into this dock and when it's plugged in, it will start charging. I'm finding the battery life to be quite long. It has lasted multiple days. I don't think it's gonna be as long as the battery system in uh, the 4K Surface Pen, the round one, where you can go a year and it's still on 88%, but I am still finding the battery life to be good and there's an indicator on the pen that tells you when you need a charge. Now, I have a couple other pens in here. I wanted to do a general comparison just to show you the size and the shape difference. We have the Apple Pencil, which is longer than all three here. Uh, we have the round Surface Pen, the 4K Surface Pen. And I also wanted to bring in the Adonit Snap because it has a similar flat design. However, it's more flat than the Surface Slim Pen. The Surface Slim Pen is kind of more rounded in its flatness. It's kind of a weird thing. You have to kind of hold it and see it in person. Um, so it is a bit more round than the Adonit Snap. Here it is directly compared to the 4K round Surface Pen. Uh, so very different when it comes to design and a completely different tip design as well. So different eraser design, different tip design. Now where the erasers feel the same, uh, where a big difference is, is in how the tips feel. And I'm going to go into detail when we start working on that. So this is the same exact pen technology as the other round pen. There's no differences in the technology. We only have differences in design, but some of the design differences make impact on drawing, sketching, and painting. And I would say one of the biggest areas that make impact for this slim pen is in its overall design and this new tip design. The new tip reminds me of the Apple Pencil and a mixture of the Adana Ink Pro that we reviewed a while back. I think the Surface Pen gets a worse rap than it deserves. Uh, in some examples out there, you can watch them and it will look like it's the worst input technology out there. And a while back, it was. It really was one of the worst. But when they developed the 4K pen, it got a lot better. And it has improved with updates over time. It's gotten a lot better. So when you are seeing those examples, that's usually in a software that 
doesn't really understand input interpretation. And it's also in a software that is not fully set up for the pen, giving you a very half-baked experience uh, when it comes to the input. But when you're working in something that is fully set up for it, like Clip Studio Paint, you're going to get a good experience. And if you compare this experience back and forth with an experience that is not fully set up for the pen, that is giving you a half-baked experience with the pen, you're going to see a really big difference between the two. So I feel that's important to know about the Surface Pen. No, this is not going to be the first experience I grab and go to for drawing, sketching, painting, or inking. You guys know the Apple Pencil is my gold standard um, for good reason, along with Wacom's technology. I've gone over those reasons a lot, so you guys know why. But when I do only have the Surface on me, I still am able to get an enjoyable working experience with the pen. And um, there's plenty of times where I am illustrating on the surface and I have no problems at all um, when it comes to the actual input technology. Now, back to the tip design. One area where this new tip design really comes through is for inking. That exercise I was doing before going thick to thin with the lines, that is something I'm not able to do with the round pen and the rubberized tip. Um, that is something that I'm able to do with this new pen design and this new tip. So that was exciting for me because that's kind of always the experience I wanted to get with the surface here when it comes to my line and ink work. So I definitely prefer this for inking. Um, and this is also a different tip than the triangular tip that comes in the Surface Pen Tip Kit. Different feel on screen and a different design makeup. So I am just doing some stuff on the spot here, improvised. And what I wanna show you with this is the precision of this tip, this new tip design. When I'm going in for the detail, the way that the dispersion of pressure is happening from thick to thin, when I go in for the really fine detail, uh, you can see that's all coming through really nicely here. There were no setbacks when I was doing this piece here, um, going in for the way that I ink from thick to thin with varied pressure. Um, you know, everything came through nicely. So I didn't have any frustrations when I was working with this pen. And I have run into frustrations with the round pen because of how that particular design is. There are different styles I implement for ink where I do still like uh, the round pen and its overall feel, but also the way that that tip feels because it starts to kind of feel like a brush. So there are areas where I like that, but for precision inking, for going in with very fine detail, I would probably nine times out of 10 choose the new slim pen over the round pen and the stock tip for inking. Um, so I got a really nice experience with this new pen for laying down varied pressure ink, and I really enjoyed it. And I also really enjoyed the button placement when I need to drag the canvas around. The placement of the button lands in a much better spot for that. So jitter is something that is often brought up when it comes to the Surface Pen. This is not something that has ever gotten in the way of my work, uh, even when it was really bad in the Pro 3 days, because the jitter is only apparent on diagonals when you draw really slow. When you're drawing at a normal speed, that is not apparent at all. There is no jitter. And again, it's only on the diagonals. But as you can see here, when I'm drawing slowly on this diagonal, and this is also with stabilization off, you can see the jitter is really reduced. So they've done good work with reducing the jitter. It's not completely gone, but when you're working in a software set up for the pen, the jitter is even more reduced. So now I wanna just lay down some quick stuff for paint and we're gonna compare some things back and forth with the round pen. So with the new slim pen, it is still nice to paint with, but we do have this harder tip. So it's giving a very different feel versus the feel you might be used to with the round pen, with the stock rubber tip. But what I really like about the round pen with the stock tip is it begins to kind of feel like a brush. And there are some other differences. So I'm gonna bring in the round pen now. And one thing that's apparent is it does feel like it has a little bit 
less of an initial activation force. It feels like um, the paint is coming out a little bit easier, and I believe that is strictly due to the difference in the hardness of the tip. So that's one thing that's apparent. But this stock tip that's in the round pen has a really brush-like feel. And that's something I still very much enjoy about the round pen. Each of these pens have a very different feel when you are working with them. While they are the exact same input technology, the design of each is very different. And when you compare them directly back and forth, those design differences do come through and it does change the overall feel of the experience. So design does go a long way when it comes to a pen. I do find both to be comfortable and ergonomic in hand. In one area, the Slim Pen is more ergonomic because of its button placement. So if you do use that button a lot, I think you will end up preferring the Slim Pen over the Round Pen. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to personal preference. There are some drawbacks of the Slim Pen if you are using it with the Pro 5, 6, or 7, and that's in integration and pen storage. It's a less integrated experience versus the Round Pen. While you can attach the Slim Pen to the side of the machine magnetically, in other areas, it's nowhere near as strong of a hold that you get with the Round Pen. Whereas with the Pro X, you are able to store the Slim Pen in the keyboard cover, which also also doubles as the charging method. Using it with other compatible machines means you have to charge the pen externally with the included charging dock. However, the pen's battery does last a long time and it lasts multiple days, so you wouldn't have to carry the dock around with you. So all around, I do like the new Surface Slim Pen. It feels good in the hand, it has a good button placement, it's ergonomic, it's enjoyable to work with. Most of all, I really enjoy the new tip design. I enjoy the way that that feels when working with it for drawing, painting, and sketching. It is something I can recommend. It's definitely a good design and it's a nice product. But if you already have the round 4K Surface Pen, being that this pen is $150 it's hard for me to recommend that you just go out and buy it unless you do a lot of drawing and illustrating with your surface and you want to have a different feel with that experience. I would say the most disappointing thing about the Slim Pen is the price. Being that it is the exact same input technology as the round 4K Surface Pen, you're just getting a different design and casing. While the design does make impact for when you are working with it, especially with that new tip design, I still don't feel like that was enough to justify the really high price tag of the Slim Pen. However, that's how these things work. Unfortunately, things tend to go up and not down. Guys, I wanna thank you for tuning in today. If you like this video, it'd be great if you can Share it with a friend if you can drop a comment, if you can drop a like. But most of all, it would be best if you could subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos are out. We will be back with a lot more soon. Have a great day.